So, hello there, and welcome to the tutorial. My name is Hannah Bakshi, and this time we're going to be going over a new playlist, uh, which is called Tan Maze Tips. And this time, uh, as by the name suggests, I'm going to be telling you tips about tutorials I have done previously or I am yet to do. Uh, and so these tips will include stuff like uh, uh, frequently asked questions, questions that I got that are really small, but they are significant, and actually, uh, lots of people do uh, ask this question, uh, and just basic stuff like that. Uh, so let's get started and so uh, today uh, my question comes from Vin. Uh, so actually he's working on a bigger project uh, which I might create a part two on maybe uh, but uh, actually his main question for this specific time uh, was first of all he can't uh, he doesn't want to buy a, um, a hosting provider uh, so instead he wants to host locally. Uh, and because he's hosting locally, uh, how do I make uh, the uh, our, I, our testing device actually connect uh, to that local server? Uh, so first of all, let's get started, and let's just see how a basic uh, network would have worked uh, if uh, we were to connect. So first of all, this is your laptop, or actually, let's just draw a desktop because it's easier to draw. Um, actually. So we have a bit more space because I'm going to be drawing something here. I'm going to erase this. You all know his name now. Uh, and so, <coughs> yeah, so this is the desktop. Let's just say something here, here a power button. OK, uh, so this is our uh, specific uh, little uh, desktop here. Uh, now that we have this desktop, uh, let's just say we have our router here. Right there. Now that we have a router, uh, we can say that this uh, desktop is connected to this router. So now uh, let's just do something like okay, we have another iPhone testing device here. Now there are a few exceptions to this rule that I'm about to tell you. Uh, and so this is your iPhone, and this is connected to your own router. And so, on your other end, however, you have some other users. Uh, and these users are users over here. And so, let's just say this is uh, number one, user number one user number two and user number three so i can give you some examples uh now first of all what would happen usually uh is first of all you are running a server here on your uh a desktop here uh and so and this is connected to your router and this means that if you were to access from this iDevice, it would completely work. However, before I continue, let me just tell you, there are two different types of IP addresses. There's the public and there's the private. The private IP address is the IP address that only you and devices within your local network can see and access. However, a public IP address, as the name suggests, is an IP address that both you locally and people outside can access only if it's port forwarded. I'll explain what that means in just a second. So this means that this specific, um, uh, what's you call it, uh, server has a private IP address, and let's just say it's uh, 0 0.0.0.0, .0 .0 .0. Uh, and this is like a desktop local server, uh, local server sort of thing. Uh, and so this has an IP, a private IP address of 0 0.0.0.1. Now let's come over here. Again, these are not real IP addresses. These are just fake, so you get the point. Uh, and let's just say our public IP address. Now let me just tell you, all devices will have the same public IP address as long as they're connected to the same router, because this router assigns them this IP address. So let's just say it's 1.1.1.1. Uh, now, of course, uh, private IP addresses would start with something like 192.168 and stuff, uh, but 
I'm just giving this as a little example for now. Uh, and so just to give it uh, as a little clear demonstration. Uh, so now, as you can see, we have the phone, we have the server, and we have our router, all with respective IP addresses. And so now, let's just say uh, that our uh, iPhone over here uh, wants to access 0.0.0.0. .0 now, first of all, uh, we have seen that this is a private IP address. What this means is that it's in its our it's in it it's sorry it is in our own local network. We do not need to go searching for it elsewhere. And so this iPhone will send a request to the router over here. Then what's going to happen is the router will process this and it'll send a request to your desktop or local server and it will go through the server. Then your server will process and get whatever is required and then continue back. Then again, your router will process this and this will go back. Again, I'm not exactly telling you like point by point whatever's happening inside. This is not exactly what's happening uh, for uh, for sure, but this is just a simple demonstration of how this works. So we'll just go through the router as a little bridge, come back and go back. It's that simple. And so now, uh, let's just say uh, our user number one wanted to access our server. How would we do this? Well, first of all, uh, as we know how the internet works, let's just say there's a few. Uh, nodes here, 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 here. You don't need to really care about these. These are just uh, little dots where some nodes are. Uh, and these all have IP addresses, and these will link us to get to this router. So let's just say user number two, I'm not going to start with user number one yet, goes and tries to access this server to get some information. First of all, he's going to need this public IP address. And there's one major flaw with this, which I'll tell you. So he's trying to connect to 1.1.1.1. Now, how will he do this? First of all, uh, of course, his DNS will take care of everything and stuff. And then he's going to start to connect from here to here to here to here to here to here. And then finally to the router. Again, this is not accurate, just a random uh, depiction of this. And so, what would happen uh, is, now this is accessing the router. However, our router, first of all, it does not know where it needs to go. It doesn't know if it needs to go to this iPhone. It doesn't need to know if it needs to go to the server. It doesn't need to know if it, goes, if it needs to go to another device. It doesn't know this because we haven't given it a port which I will talk about later. But let's just assume that it knew that it had to go to the server. Then it would actually try its best to go. However, it has a little wall in between which will prevent us from going forward. And so our connection is invalid and user number two is not able to connect. However, there is something called port forwarding. What is port forwarding, you may I ask? Let's take this little blank area to explain. First of all, let's just draw our router here. OK. And let's just draw a few uh, boxes, maybe four. Now, there are actually, actually, first let me explain. There's ports 1, 2, 3, and 4. And so what's happening now uh, is that, first of all, uh, ports go from a few hundred, uh, f a few ten thousand to a few other ten thousand. These are not accurate ports, just as a uh, demonstration again. And again, port forwarding varies from router to router. Uh, doesn't ex there isn't one s strict set of rules that you can follow for every single router to port forward. So unfortunately, you can't do that. However, this is the basics of how it works. So let's just say uh, someone tries to access port 1. This will be denied because port 1 is closed. 
port 2 is also closed, port 3 is also closed, and port 4 is also closed. Now let's just say uh, we were to send requests to each one, they would all deny it, and we would get no result. Now let's just say we were to unblock number 3. Now if we were to send a request, it would go through onto our router. Our router will process this and it will say, okay, port 3 is open on this server. And so what that means is I have to go to the server, make it process, send it back through this entire network. So how will we make this work? Well, let's see. So first of all, what we're going to do in order to make this work and so this is the example without port forwarding. Without port forwarding, this is a complete mess and jumble. However, if I were to port forward, and if a more smart number one user were to access, for example, okay, let's just go over here, uh, and for this specific computer, we have unblocked port number, uh, I don't know, 8001. Done. So now what we're going to do is we're going to come over to user number one, and let's just say he tries to access 1.1.1.1. But wait, how do we tell it that we have to access port 8001? Well, to do that, we just write a colon 8001, or the port number. And so what this is going to do is it's going to tell us exactly where we need to go, and exactly how to get there, and how to come back. And so, since 8001 has been opened, the router will actually allow this connection. So let's just say number one goes from here to here to here to here, uh, and then to here, and then here. And then it reaches the router. Actually, let me just erase number two's path so that you can actually see number one's path. Because it's a bit confusing, isn't it? It's a bit confusing for me as well. So don't worry. Okay. Okay. So now, as you can see, number one has made its way to the router. No surprise. However, there is still a wall. But within that wall, there is a gap. And this gap's name is 8001. And so what this means is that 8001 corresponds to specifically this server. And so since we have sent a request from user number one over here with port 8001 over here, we've sent a request with port 8001. And what this means is it will travel all the way to our router and it'll find the gap in the wall that says 8001 and so once it finds this little gap it's going to go through it's going to go through this little server it's going to process its information go back through this little tunnel back this entire path and user number one will have gotten his data that's exactly how that works. Now, let's see user number three. Why did I choose three users, you may ask? Well, let's just see why. It's actually quite interesting why. It's because I wanted to show you something, which is, if you were to access a different port, for example, maybe if we were to access port number, oh, I don't know, 80, which is actually most, actually, not 80, that's a really common port. Let's just go with um, 3,000. Okay? Let's go with port 3,000. We're trying to access port 3,000. And so let's just say port 3,000 is right here. That's the gap, that's the part of the wall that is labeled 3,000. So what's going to happen? User number three is going to start, he's going to connect. He's going to go through this entire map, and he reaches our router. 
Now, what's going to happen is since the request was sent from to, uh, to access port number 3000, it's going to search for 3000. Okay, 3000. Oh, 3000. Now, it sees this is blocked. It cannot break through this wall. So it goes back and says that, sorry, the request was not able to be handled. However, user number three's problem can be solved either by also opening the port 3000 it, but also it can be solved and I'm not exactly sure if all routers have this but there is an option where you can uh, forward all ports actually uh, open all ports at once uh, which actually does help help in some situations uh, if you're trying to open all your ports at once if you're having trouble with port forwarding or something which is actually quite a common thing with routers then you can just open up all your uh, ports at once and then it will uh, it do exactly what it says open all the ports at once and no matter which port you access it will always go to this computer however you can only turn that mode on for one computer at a time or else of course the router won't know whether to, whether to direct you to this or this doesn't know pretty simple and yeah uh, that was pretty much uh, the video win I hope this really helped uh, I really hope this helped all of you as well uh, again, if you have any questions, leave it down in the comments. Like the video if you liked it, and also subscribe to my channel if you like my content and you want to see more of it. Uh, also, consider following me on Twitter, at Tajimani. Uh, the link will be down in the description. Everything will be down in the description, even a little bit more simplified version of what I just explained. And that's going to be it. Goodbye.